Hi everyone, this is Heather Smith from Storyville Photography, and today I'm going to walk through how to use some of my actions. If you're newer to Photoshop or have never used actions before, this can be quite useful. And I'm also going to show you how to work one of my light overlays. Um, so this is a picture of my daughter taken at a garden by our house. Uh, very, very pretty flowers everywhere. And it was taken around sunset. So we have this beautiful golden light and she's backlit, which gave her a nice rim light around her hair. I just love this image. So I'm going to first start out with the Dreamy Mat. As you will see, it comes in a folder and you're going to want to open that folder by clicking this arrow right here. And then three different actions are going to pop down. You have the Creamy Mat, the Twisted Mat, and the Basic Mat. And then you're going to want to click on whichever one you want to use. Uh, for this, I'm going to use the creamy mat. So you click on the action that you want to use and you hit the play button. And then it's going to take you to this screen, which is giving you directions. Um, for this action in particular, you're going to want to run it on the background layer. So if you have a bunch of layers open in the panel, you're going to want to merge them together or make sure the background layer is selected or it will not work properly. Then hit continue. And you were going to look at your image and be like, what in the world is going on? What did this action do to my image? She's blurry now and it's a little bit too saturated. Um, so you'll pop over here and you'll notice all these different layers. And guys, I really like to crank my layers up. Um, so you're going to have to do some adjusting in the opacity over in the layers panel to get it to fit your image perfectly. So, and the reason why I wanted to run one of the Dreamy bases is because, as you can see here, she is completely out of focus right now, along with the background. This is what it looks like before, and this is what it looks like after the action. You're definitely going to want to play around with the opacity here. That's what the slider is for. You can crank it all the way up, it makes her super blurry, or just add a tiny bit. I like it around there. You always are going to want to brush this off of your subject so she stays in focus or whatever you are shooting. So to do that, you're going to take a black brush at 100% opacity, make sure it's a soft one, not a hard one, or you're going to have really distinct lines, which you don't want, and wipe it off of your subject. And in this case, I'm going to probably wipe it off of the flowers too, just to bring them back in focus. So now I just added a little bit of creaminess to the background, which I like, and that looks good to me. So we're going to pop up a little bit to the Brighten Shadows, which gives a nice little matte effect. And again, you can keep it on the skin or you can take it off. I'll probably take it off about half percent. So with a black soft brush, I'm going to just wipe a little bit off of her to bring her back in focus and I'll probably keep it on the flowers there. So that's the before and after. And the contrast adds a little bit dimension to it. Again, you guys just play with these sliders. You can take it as high as you want, as low as you want. Um, I'm gonna put it about there, that looks good to me. And the highlights, I don't think that we really need the highlights on this one. It's already bright enough and we will go um, correct her skin tones and brighten her up with the skin tone action so don't worry about her skin being dull right now. And the color dazzle just kind of brings a little bit more color into the whole image, which I like. So this focus subject is a gradient and you're going to want to make sure that the light falls over her so just the edges surrounding her is dark. You can play with the scale, you can make it bigger, smaller, whatever you'd like. I'm going to keep it about 90% and I'm going to go over it with a black brush just in case any of the dark edges fall over her because I do not want her being dark. You can also turn it off. You can turn off any of these or keep them on if you'd like. Totally your call. So, okay. So that is the creamy matte. That's the before and the after. It just adds a little bit more dreaminess. Um, I really like the look that it gives. The next thing we're going to do is take some of this neon green 
and get rid of it. I'm going to go into the grass rescue. Again, click this side arrow and you're going to have two options to drop down the Storyville um, grass rescue and then the Storyville mint. I'm going to hit play on the mint. So you select it and hit the play button and it's going to tell you to use a soft white um, paintbrush and paint away the areas where you don't want the neon anymore. So hit continue and you're going to take a soft white brush. I always do 100% opacity and then I dial it back just because I like to see where I'm painting. And we're not going to keep this extreme mint on here. I just want some of those yellow tones to leave this image. So I'm going to turn that down and that looks good to me. So turn it on, off, and I like how that looks. I also want to bring a little bit more cyan into the background and maybe into the grass. So to do that, I'm going to go to one of the tones. For all of my tones, guys, they are cranked really, really high. So again, you're going to want to play with the opacity in the layers panel. I like to see where I'm painting and that's what works best for me. So I'm going to go into the lavish turquoise and hit play. And again, use the soft white brush to paint on the areas that you'd like. So I'm going to take that 100% opacity and I'm going to paint it over the background here. Just to tone down some of the reds a little bit and give it a nice cooler tone mixed with the, the bright tones. I really like that. Make sure not to get it on your subject's skin. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but if you're doing this for a client or um, going to get it printed, whatever, I would spend a lot more time zooming in. So then I'm going to turn this down just to leave a little bit on there. And I think around 19% looks good. So that's the before and after. It's very subtle, but I really like the difference it makes there. Now I'm going to show you how to work one of my light overlays. I like to finish up the background and then begin on my subject. So then after the light overlay, I'm going to show you how to use the skin rescue. So click on the overlay of your choice. In this case, I'm going to use the Storyville Sun 1. And you're going to select it all. And then you're going to copy it. So Command C or Control C if you're using Windows. And then I'm going to paste it, Command or Control V, right on top. From here, you're going to want to change the opacity to screen mode. So you're going to go over to the Layers panel, and you're going to select the screen mode. And then you're going to want to hit Command T, which is Free Transform, or Control T if you're using Windows, and place the light overlay wherever you'd like. I want it to come from behind her because she has that nice rim light going on in her hair and I think it will just add a little bit more dimension to the image and be very pretty. So I'm going to hit the check mark, OK, and then you're going to want to um, add Gaussian Blur to it. So go into the filters, Blur Gallery, Gaussian Blur, and I do it around 30-40%. If you don't do this, then you're going to get this really awkward line throughout your image, and you don't want that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe it off of her. You can choose to leave it on. You can choose to adjust the opacity, just like every other layer. Um, you can fiddle around with that till you know what you like. I'm going to leave it at 100 for now, and I'm going to use a soft black brush at 100% opacity and brush it off of her face and some of her hair. I'll leave a little bit on. And that looks good to me. Also, if you want to ever brighten up your light overlay, I suggest you to go into the Hue and Saturation panel and then hit this little down arrow. It will only affect the sun layer. So you can brighten it up as much as you want or you can decrease the saturation as much as you want. I'm going to brighten it up a little bit for this. I think that looks good to me. So that's the before and the after the light overlay. I just love them. I add them to almost all of my images. So now that I'm happy with the background, I like to go into my 
Storyville retouch and fix up the subject a little bit. So click the side arrow and you're going to have a few options drop down and you can just select whatever you want. Here her skin looks pretty smooth so I'm not going to go into much detail with that but all of these actions pretty much work the same guys. So the first thing I want to do is brighten her up a little bit. So I'm going to go into the story bell of Brighten Skin and Eyes and play that. And then I'm going to first brighten her skin. So I'm going to select this. It is inverted. So you're going to want to hit the white soft brush at 100% opacity. And again, this is going to come on strong. And then we will dial it back in the layers panel. You can also get it a little bit on her dress if you want. It looks pretty blown out there, but we can take care of that. Okay, and that looks pretty good to me. There. Maybe add a little bit more to her dress. And then I'll erase a little bit of this. So take it to about 50% opacity on a black brush and wipe it off. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is brighten up her eyes. Zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to go to the Brighten Eyes, soft white brush at 100% opacity. Just paint it on. You can do the side, her whites too, if you'd like, or your subject's whites. But I would take some of that off or it's going to look really, really fake. So that looks good to me. I like that. And now I want to give her a little bit of color in her cheeks and her lips. So I'm going to run the uh, Rosy Cheek and Lips Enhancement. Hit play. Then you're going to have a selection of colors. For this, I'm going to use the Precious Pink. And again, the Soft White Brush, 100% Opacity, and she's going to look like a clown. But then we dial it back. doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to dial it way back. Just enough there. Okay, we might turn down her eyes a little bit. It looks a little bit frightening. Ready to go. Okay. And I think I want to darken this overall just a little bit more. So I'm going to just click up here and grab a curves adjustment layer and pull down on the midtones. It looks good. And I'm going to brush that off of her. So soft black brush at 100% opacity. There, and that looks pretty nice. You can also um, do some dodging and burning if you'd like. I'm, just for an example, I'm going to run it for you and show you, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Okay, so you're going to select the dodge and burn and hit the side arrow, and then you're going to play it. And if you read the directions, it shows you um, to use a soft white brush on low opacity for the highlighted areas and then a soft black brush for the burn. I usually like to keep it around 8%, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to just burn her a little bit. It just defines the shadows a little bit more. It makes the image pop. Okay, and then maybe a little bit of dodging. So I'll grab the soft white brush. And again, you could spend like hours just dodging and burning away. It depends on how detailed you want to get or what your project is for. But I'm just going to leave it at that. See, just a little bit. It adds a lot more definition to the overall image. Okay. 
So now I'm going to group it together for you guys with all of the layers. And so this is where we ended, and here is where we began. So the finished product and where we began. Thanks for listening, guys. You can find all these actions in the light overlay at storyvillephotography.com. Have a great day. Bye.